Hi, Thomas from Field Tennis. One of the most underrated ways of improving your game is a free hitting session. I know that for most players it sounds very boring. They don't know how to practice when they're just free hitting. They want to have a drill or most of you want to play points because you feel okay only in points I am pushed to the limit and I'm improving myself. But I would like to argue differently because from my personal experience it was the free hitting sessions that improved my strokes the most. So just to point out that free hitting is really really useful for improving your strokes. I'm not talking about tactics or the mental game which is what competition will help you improve. But when you want to work on your strokes, on the fundamentals, on your contact point, on your weight transfer, on watching the ball and so on, which means mastering your technique, mastering your strokes, or mastering your movement, then free hitting sessions are the best way of working on that. So why is a free hitting session so good? The main reason is that there is no pressure. There is no pressure and there is no distraction. You don't have to worry about the score, you don't have to worry about your opponent, you don't have to really worry where you're going to play the ball. So the only general main intention that you should have in your mind is that you're playing down the middle back to your partner and you want to play a nice ball. Because when you play a nice ball, then it's very likely that you will receive a nice ball. Nice, easy, not too fast, not too high. And so on that ball you can practice your strokes. When you have to scramble around the court, you cannot really practice your strokes until they're grooved in. In fact, the worst thing you can do for your strokes if you're working on your strokes is to play points and especially doubles. Playing doubles for points is the worst thing you can do for your stroke technique. If your stroke technique is not grooved in, if it's grooved in and you're a level 4 player or level 4.5, then you're just going to bring that technique to a high level. You will improve it and you'll be able to adjust to different situations. But if you're a 3.0, 3.5 or lower, then when you play doubles, you're just going to scramble around the court and improvise. You will constantly improvise. Instead of executing your stroke, you're going to play like this and like this. And you're going to make a lot of jerky movements. You will not swing. You will not spin the ball, you will not watch the ball, you will not be balanced, and so on. And so, because you will constantly be pushed around, and someone is poaching, and someone is volleying, and so on, so there's constantly something going on, you're all the time stressed, you cannot settle down, you cannot calm down, and so you are just doing the best you can and improvising all the time. And therefore, your strokes cannot get grooved in. Once you get to the stage where the strokes are grooved in, they will not break down under pressure. And so that's what the free hitting sessions are about. They're helping you groove in your strokes, so they are so automatic that they will not break down under pressure. The main argument I hear against the free hitting sessions is that they are boring, that it's not very interesting, that it's much more interesting to play matches. Yes, it's more interesting to play matches for your ego because your ego gets much more satisfaction from beating someone than from improving your contact point a bit. But if you're serious about improving your game and mastering your game, then you have to focus on your strokes and other skills that might not be visible. Some skills are visible like how you prepare your racket or how you work on your technique and other strokes are invisible. Do you hit the ball in front? Are you timing the ball? Are you in a rhythm with the ball? Are you breathing? Are you watching the ball? Do you have a clear intention and so on? There are many invisible skills in tennis that you have to master and bring to a higher level if you want to be a better player. And this is what you do in free hitting sessions. This is what you can focus on because you're not distracted by your opponent or by the match or by the audience around you. You can just focus on that one single task at hand and work on it and improve it to a higher level. I want to show you two ways how you can work on your strokes in a free hitting session. This first way, the first method, is when you work at, on one thing at a time. So, for the sake of better demonstration, I'm going to play with my left hand and let's say I have three mistakes. The first one is that 
I'm not moving and split stepping. The second one is that my preparation will be like this rather than like this. And my third mistake is that I'm hitting the ball too late. So let me try and play a bit like that. So I'm not moving, I'm hitting the ball late and my racket preparation is not up. So if I want to work on this, I have to work only on one thing at a time. Now why does this work? Just think of it like that, that you have three skills and let's say all three for me right now are, let's say not moving is, I'm not moving well, I'm not splitting, split stepping well, that's like at my 10%. I need to get to 100% eventually to be good at it. And I'm late on the ball most of the time, let's say I'm at 30%. And I'm preparing low, so that's not correct in this instance, so I'm at 10 or 20%. So as I work on each of these skills separately, they each of them improves a little bit. So in today's session, I might improve each skill by 10%, even though at that moment, I don't work on other skills. I know that this is sometimes very difficult for people to accept or understand that when you focus on one thing, the other things that you still need to work on are not going to be good. Don't worry about it. Each skill is being improved by itself a little bit. And if you repeat that, over time, then you're going to bring your split step ability or your split step skill from 20 to 30 percent and then from 30 to 40 and from 40 to 50. And so you're working on each skill separately and each skill or each element of the stroke is improving gradually. So overall you are improving and one day it's going to fall into place. So how would I work on that? And just one more thing. This is what beginners should do and like intermediate players and also advanced players sometimes. So the second method that I will show later is more for advanced players. But if you're more a beginner or intermediate 3.0, 3.5, work on one thing at a time. So how would I work on this if, if I'm, as I said, my split step is not good, my preparation is not good and I'm hitting late. I would just focus on split step. So, let me try and start the rally. So right now I'm thinking about split step and I play tennis. I'm thinking and split step and I play tennis. And as you can see, my preparation is not good and I'm hitting the ball late, but I don't worry about it because I just have to focus for five minutes, five to 10 minutes on one thing at a time to make it a bit more automatic. So. I'm thinking moving split step and play. Moving split step, play. Split step, play. Moving split step, play. Moving split step, play. Okay, so I would do this at least minimum, minimum five minutes. I would say about 10 minutes, your focus can last maybe about 10 minutes. Then you take a little break, you take a little drink or you just walk around and breathe. <sighs> you clear your mind and you say, okay, now I'm going to focus on preparing my racket up. I don't have to think about split step anymore. It will not be there. I can really focus only at one thing at a time if my skills are not that good. So right now I just focus on, I want to prepare like this rather than like this. So I can tell myself, racket head up and I play. And I think racket head up and I play. I think racket head up and I play. And as you can see, I'm not moving well. I'm not doing split steps because I'm not paying attention to that. So I'm just working on one skill at a time. Racket head up. So I'm just thinking about that. It's okay, I got it. Here you go. Racket head up and play. Racket, as soon as David hits the ball, I'm thinking racket head up and help with the other hand. Racket head up. So again, I do this for five or 10 minutes, nothing else. Do not be bothered 
by some other mistakes like hitting late or being off balance or not watching the ball don't worry about it just get this skill this part of your stroke a bit better today and next week or next session a bit better one by one by one now my last one was that I'm hitting the balls late so I'll focus on let's say hit the ball in front so I'm just focusing okay hit the ball in front and I'm just focusing on front next one here we go I want to hit the ball in front and I want to hit the ball in front I want to hit the ball in front so as you can see I can do it I pay full attention to it I'm playing with my left hand but when I focus I was able to hit all balls much more in front than I did before so I'm improving my skill of hitting the ball in front in the right contact point or in the right contact zone a bit by bit by bit and it will start to settle in my mind it will start to ingrain and so I will work on each skill separately day by day by day by day and they will all improve and I don't have to worry that because I didn't do split step now that somehow all that work that I did before is lost it's not lost it's somewhere stored and so as you repeat this often these skills will become easier and at some point you will be able to track more of them at the same time but your mind needs to be fast and you must not have so much trouble with each skill so when you don't have so much trouble with each skill then you can track more skills at the time but I wouldn't suggest more than three it's best maybe just two if they're far apart so what I can do for example is I can try all three but it's not easy so I'll I'll keep talking so that you can hear how much goes through my mind so I have to move split racket head up in front move split up move up in front move split up in front move split up in front move split up in front as you can see that's very mentally demanding you have to have really good focus must not be distracted by anything and your mind has to work like that all the time for five to ten minutes so it's not easy and that's why it's best not to do it it's best to do it one by one by one the other way of working on your strokes in a free hitting session and not just on the technique the visible part but also on the invisible part is when you're just receiving feedback and constantly adjusting so first I want to mention that when I make a mistake or when I work on strokes I don't see missing a shot as a mistake I don't judge it I just see it as a fact my ball was too low if it went into the net therefore I need to play higher rather than thinking my backhand sucks it went into the net that doesn't tell you what to do next you need to use every shot that you make as a feedback to you and then learn from it and try to improve what you're working on now what is really important here is that you're receiving nice balls if someone cannot give you nice balls and you're running around the court all the time you cannot work on your strokes that is how it is you need a good partner they need to hit to you nice steady balls in roughly the same rhythm at this stage so that you can receive very similar balls regularly and then you can adjust your strokes if you receive a forehand on one ball and then a low slice and then a high backhand and then a running forehand you cannot work on your strokes and on these skills you need to receive a similar ball multiple times to your forehand so that you can work on adjusting and also to address the idea that when players say a free hitting session is boring I want to show you how it's not boring and I will keep talking what's going on through my mind and what I used to do when I was working on my strokes and even now what goes through my mind so I'll just keep explaining to you I'll keep talking what goes through my mind on every shot and you will see that it's not boring 
because I can't do what I want most of the time. I'm unsuccessful in exactly what I want, but you will see that you have to really pay attention. So I'll start the rally. So my goal is to hit a nice ball to David and I'm going to start giving you feedback what I'm experiencing and what I would like to work on. So this one was too low and I didn't hit in the middle. This one was good. This one was good because it was deep as much as I wanted. This one landed a bit shorter than I wanted. This one I didn't hit in the middle. I have to watch the ball. Okay, I'm watching the ball. This one was good. This one a bit short. I didn't want to play that short, but I didn't hit the middle. I didn't hit the middle again. This one is good. This one, I was late a bit because it skid off the line. This one is perfect. This one, I didn't hit in the middle, I was too close. This one is good, I didn't hit the middle, but it's okay. This one is good, perfect. Good enough, a little bit shorter. Not in the middle, but good enough. Not in the middle. So I'm constantly aware that I don't hit the middle. You have to be aware of that. My shot is okay, but let's say the last forehand, I think I hit somewhere here. So I'm aware of this, that the ball is not here, but it's here. Because I can feel that the ball is pushing like this, my racket, he wants to turn it, and I feel less power. The sweet spot spot of the racket is not that big. It's maybe the size of your hand. And so whenever you hit outside of your sweet spot, or as soon as you go off center, the ball will get less power. Because the strings are the most bouncy only in the middle of the racket. And then they're less bouncy, so the ball doesn't bounce much from here. And so I'm constantly aware of every shot where whether I hit the middle or not, whether I hit the sweet spot or not. And I just register it. I'm just aware where I hit the ball that it's not in the middle. And my brain is registering that and is adjusting. So I cannot consciously at will hit the sweet spot. I can't. Because it's not me, Thomas, doing the calculation. It's my brain. And so my brain needs to go through feedback loop many, many, many times to adjust the movement of my arm based on what I see so that I hit the middle. So we have to go through this process hundreds and thousands of times to improve our brain's ability to improve our hand-eye coordination so that the racket goes where the ball is and we hit the sweet spot. And I am constantly aware of it. Every shot I make I know whether I hit the sweet spot or not. And you can also hear other parts that I say like, okay, my, my shot was good, but it was a bit lower than I wanted or a bit shorter and so on. So again, I'm giving myself feedback, higher, shorter, more power, less power, watch the ball and so on. So here we go. This one was good. This one was perfect because it's still inside the court. You might not see that, but just land it before this one is a bit long I have to play a bit shorter this one is perfect this one is good this one is a bit shorter than i wanted this one is too long so i'm trying to adjust my power maybe i add a bit of top spin this one is good but i didn't hit the middle i have to watch the ball see the ball this one too long i have to adjust this one shorter than I wanted. This one longer than I wanted. So I'm searching. I'm searching for that right amount of power, spin, height, and so on. So it's feel based. This one is good. This one is maybe on the line. I'm not sure. This one I managed, but the stroke was not comfortable. This one is good. This one is perfect. 
This one I did the best I could. Too low, I need to go higher a bit. Just practice. This one is good. I missed the direction. I wanted to hit more towards David. I was a split second too late and my ball went over there. So how is this boring? <laughs> how is this boring if on 75% of my shots something is not right? That means I have to work on them. Work, 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 hit, 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 hit. Hundreds, thousands of balls. Focus, feedback, focus, feedback. See the ball shorter, longer, higher, more spin, less spin and so on and as I do that my skills improve my eye-hand coordination skill improves through practice and feedback I, I, my feel improves so how much force do I give to the ball that I don't hit it too much or not enough my feel for the racket head angle improves so that I can hit it at the right height which will give me the right depth and so on. So at my stage, I don't have to worry about contact point much or stroke technique, but I have plenty of things to work on and I can easily hit with David for one hour and make it super interesting and focused for me because 75% or 80% of the time as I hit the ball, something is not right. So again, how is that boring? I have to work on my game because if 75 or 80 percent of the time when I hit the ball something is not exactly right how well can I play a match if I can't hit the ball where I want when I play a match or roughly where I want how can I play a good match when I was young a teenager and I worked on my tennis this was the most normal thing to do I used to play free hitting sessions three four five hours per day just hitting. I don't need to play any points to make tennis interesting to me. In fact, I all the time am aware what is not correct with my strokes and I'm working on them relentlessly. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, month after month, hit the ball in front, hit the ball in front, hit the ball in front. Don't be late because I feel that when I'm late, I don't get good power. I feel that if I'm not watching the ball, I don't hit the ball clean. I have to watch the ball. I have to keep my head still. I feel that if I'm leaning backwards when I'm hitting, I don't hit with good power. I need to maintain good balance through my stroke. And I have to repeat this many, many times in order to ingrain this and automate it. So a free hitting session is one of the best things you can do for your tennis. Try to learn from this example. Try to see if are you doing something similar that I'm suggesting or not? And then you will see how many skills you have to work on, the visible ones and the invisible ones, and how fast your game will progress, how fast your skills will progress when you put so much attention to each of them. Thanks for watching and let me know if you have any questions about this topic, because I know this is not a very common topic. But again, from my experience, I would say that 90% of my tennis skills developed from free hitting sessions. So they're very important and see if you can implement it in your game.